Build Aid Media, powered by builders and supported by Mix 93.8 FM and SA Garden and Home, are proud to bring you this homeowner workshop series. Throughout this 10-part series, we will be showcasing a wide variety of industry specialists to ensure a positive building experience. Dave Ledbetter discusses the different types of bricks available to the homeowner, their advantages and uses, with an emphasis on clay bricks. Your host is Graham Alexander from Build Aid Media. Dave, just quickly, tell us a little about the Clay Brick Association. Um, Graham, effectively the, the Clay Brick Association is simply a regulatory body. There are a huge amount of, of regulations to adhere to and safety um, of staff and personnel on a property. So it really just liaises with governments and ensures compliance to, to the requirements. Every drawing you pick up, or almost every, well, I wouldn't say every drawing, most of them, um, we look at the drawing and it's assumed that we're using brick walls. Now that's not always the case. You know, our, our slide behind us there shows people building with, with, with hay bales, which is unusual in South Africa, very unusual. But the assumption is made um, that, it's, that it's brick walls. If we could just look at some of the types of bricks. Effectively, there's, there's the clay as material and there's concrete as material. Um, you get blocks, I mean, SANS 2 to 7 um, prescribes that a brick must be rectangular in shape and it must be 48 to 54 bricks in a square meter. So what you see on the screen, um, so the previous screen uh, with these blocks, is not actually a brick, it's a block. Um, they're typically used in um, sort of low-end warehousing, they're used for RDP housing, um, certainly not, they, not in Danefern and Stain City and the likes. Um, concrete as a material has the issue of thermal, uh, thermal properties or an issue um, expansion and contraction. Concrete, when it is wet, it expands and when it, dry, um, uh, when it dries out, it shrinks, you know, and this leads to cracking. Um, so there are people out there who use concrete uh, plaster bricks and then they'll use a clay, um, say a face brick, and those bricks have different movement characteristics which leads to cracking and failure and moisture ingress. So looking at some of the, some of the bricks on the on the slide there, um, Dave. Just to and obviously there there are probably hundreds of different types of, of face brick, but just run us through so we understand one you can plaster, one you can't plaster, um, and you can't use a non a plaster brick as a face and so on. Um, what do we need to know about those bricks? Essentially, there's two types of brick. There's a there's a plaster brick and there's a face brick. Um, now within that you get two types of plaster brick, you get a plaster brick and it's simply it is to be rendered. You cannot use it as a face brick application, it is not made for that, it is porous, um, it is not fired to the same degree as, as a face brick. You also get a high strength plaster brick. Um, this is typically used for foundations, it is also called the foundation brick. Um, needless to say the foundations support the entire structure so the, the quality of, of brick going into the foundation is probably the most crucial element. Once you get above ground level, then you get you can either plaster it or, um, with a clay brick, um, or you can use a face brick. Now, within face brick, again, there are three different types of brick. This face brick aesthetic it is produced to be non-uniform in size, non-uniform in shape, non-uniform in color. Anything goes as long as it's rectangular, rectangular in shape, and has 17 MPa as a compressive strength. You get face brick standard FBS for sugar. Um, it's a brick that got certain tolerance requirements that they have to meet. Um, and there's no so Dave, sort of requirement on color. As, as a homeowner, one would think, you know, do I need to know this technical stuff? And, and you may or may um, n not need to know that. But you'll see later in the show where we say, get involved. When you, you're building your home, get involved with the design, ask questions. And some of these technicalities have a bearing on other things, Dave, like price possibly. Certainly an FBA brick. Um, a common terminology within the industry is um, semi-face. Now that's like being half pregnant. You know, you get a face brick, you get a plaster brick. Um, uh, a semi-face brick or an FBA brick, a brick that's produced to be deliberately non-uniform in shape. Your mortar costs go up dramatically because it's not uniform. Your joint sizes are massively um, increased. Now if you take cement, mortar is typically a thousand rand a cube these days. Um, you know, if you've got a, a, instead of a 12 mil mortar joint, you've suddenly got 15 or 20, you know, it's, it's, it's gone up by 25%. And suddenly your mortar, um, your mortar budget has gone through the roof. With design trends, um, you, you don't see too many face brick houses anymore that are completely face brick, as you did maybe 40, 50 years ago. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dave. 
But you do see a lot of what, what is up on the slide, where you're using feature walls inside and out. Is, is that, do you find that to be the trend as a manufacturer? Certainly it is. Um, I have a team of staff that call on architects and we follow trends both locally and overseas. And the, the days of complete Facebook accounts, even we say it's, it's ugly. But it, clay brick being a natural product, it blends in with natural rock, artificial rock, with, with timber, with steel, glass, and you get different colours of glass. And there's, there's a wide range of colours of, um, in, in clay face brick. So if you've got green glass, you know, you, you can have a contrasting thing. And that's really up to a homeowner from an aesthetics point of view. But mixed elements is very much a trend. Feature walls, um, as you see on the slide, um, the architects we've been seeing recently, um, really at the start of this year, saying face brick is a second coming. Yeah, we see a, we see a lot of it um, going through through our professional offices. What are the, what are the real benefits of of using a, a face brick? Right, well, using a face brick, the, the first one and the obvious one is aesthetics. Um, it's pretty, but the main one is it doesn't need maintenance. Uh, a plastered home, I mean, doesn't need, you don't need to plaster it. The lifetime of the building, which is typically regarded as a 50 year um, life cycle. The thermal properties of clay as a material, um, it is the most thermally efficient. Uh, clay doesn't burn a clay brick. A clay face brick doesn't burn. Um, acoustic properties, uh, noise is airborne. Um, clay as a heavy material simply um, creates a, a quiet environment. Here's the million dollar question, Dave. So I want to use face brick. How does it compare to plaster and paint from a cost point of view? Consumers typically look at a price and say, how much is a plaster brick? And typically today, one rand 20, one rand 30 a brick. And a face brick, a mid-range face brick is, say, four rand. They say, whoa, that's expensive. The thing with a plaster brick is that's not the end of the job. The job. <coughs> you have to then um, plaster it, obviously, which is more material. You then have to wait for it and apply your undercoat. And then you go back and you apply your first coat of paint. And you go back and you apply your second coat of paint. So once you've taken all the other issues into account, the cost of plaster and paint today is around 120 to 130 rand a square meter. So really the, the sort of tip or hint to a, a homeowner or a home builder would be look at the in-wall cost, not at the cost of, the, of, of brick A or brick B, um, the, the cost of the individual components, look at the in-wall cost and a brick of about, a face brick of about four rand a brick is on par with um, a plastered and painted finish once it is built and completed and you're handed the keys. And then the benefits of maintenance free is an add-on cherry on top of that. So you can keep the money to go on holiday down to Plet or wherever. So hopefully we, we're sort of understanding that a brick's not just a brick. We need to understand what it is, what does it look like, where can we use it. Now generally the architect should be guiding you with this. But you may have seen a photograph and said, Mr. Architect, I would like my kitchen to to look like that. Ask the right questions. A lot of contractors, or not a lot, many contractors over the years have been using um, bricks that are not the right strength, as Dave was saying, in the, in the foundations or for double story buildings. Now as homeowners you probably wouldn't know that, um, and, at, and I wouldn't blame you for not knowing that, unless you do a lot of reading or read some of Bill Dade's books. Um, ask those questions. But if you've employed your contractor at the right price, as we will see later, you shouldn't be doing that in the first place. Um, Dave, what services does Corabric offer um, architects and homeowners um, from a specification technical point of view? How long is a piece of spring? Um, typically they would look at it, they'd go to visit an architect, understand what the, they're working on and what the client wants. Understand budgets, understand the, the locality because if you have different requirements. If someone is building at the coast, and many people I think in the audience would may, maybe have a holiday home. If you're in a sea spray zone, um, suddenly you have corrosive salts. If you're um, 30 kilometers from the coast, you have a different requirement and inland um, for, in terms of the uh, the length of a, the, the uh, life cycle of a brick, um, you're not in a corrosive environment. Um, there are trends, we pick up on trends, I mean, many architects have come to Coral Brick and sort of said, um, we're looking for a dark grey brick because it's fashionable, and maybe it's because of 50 shades of grey, but grey is enormously fashionable at the moment. <laughs> and we have developed a range of, of grey bricks, ranging from a light grey to a dark grey. 
Um, we're now introducing, it's coming to market um, probably next month, um, textured bricks, um, applied surface coating. You know, if you look at that slide there, the grey feature walls, um, they will supply samples that the architects can supply it and present it to a homeowner. Um, they will look at complementary products, uh, paving, um, it's really wide range and in terms of supply there's a chain of merchants, you see builders all over the place, Builders Warehouse does sell um, Corabrick Brick, Corabrick's got its own, um, the six Corabrick centres, they sort of specialist centres, the local one around here is across from um, Leopold Prison in, in Kyle Army. But they're scattered around, around Gauteng and 28 around the country where the homeowner can go see a full range of brick and really engage in people, look at material, look at concepts, uh, the creative use of brick. Um, a brick doesn't have to be laid in this flat stretcher bond. There's nothing to stop you doing it in a, in a soldier course sure. and using special shaped bricks as a range of special shaped bricks to create architectural features. Um, it's unlimited. It's really clay, the use of clay brick and face brick is limited to the architect's creativity. If you can design it, it can be made. Thanks for joining us. If you would like to watch any more of the workshops in the Homeowner Series, follow the BuildAid YouTube channel or visit our website, buildaid.co.za, where you can view a full range of our product offering. To book your seat at our next workshop, visit caxtonevents.co.za. Don't forget to tune in to Mix 93.8 FM, Wednesday evenings from 6pm to 7pm, to listen to the BuildAid Show.